How important do you think it is to study grammar? That is what today's conversation is all about. What's up everyone? My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And today I have a conversation lesson for you because we're going to have a discussion about how important it is to learn grammar. How much time and energy should you be focusing on grammar in order to improve your English skills? But before you listen to our conversation, I want to go over some vocabulary with you that you are going to hear during our discussion because this is a great way to you build your vocabulary, you learn the meaning of the word, and then you get to listen to it being used in context. So let's begin. The first word that I have for you is subjective. And this is an adjective, and what it means is that, that something is based on or influenced by your own personal opinions, your feelings, your taste. And you would say that something is subjective. For example, if we're talking about an exam, if the exam is multiple choice, then it is not subjective. You either get the answer right or you get it wrong. But if, let's say, I were evaluating your speaking skills, well, then, then that may be partly based on my opinion, my view of your speaking competency. So you could say, well, that, that type of exam is a bit subjective. Then we have reinforce, and this is a verb, to reinforce something. And this just means to strengthen a, an idea, a feeling, a habit that already exists. Exists. So, for example, you already have some, some language skills like reading, listening, speaking, and you want to reinforce those skills. The skills that already exist, you want to strengthen them, you want to reinforce them. Next is a phrase, in conjunction. And what this means is, well, simply together. You often do something in conjunction with something else. So you are doing something together at, at the same time that, that you are doing another thing. And you say, well, we are doing these things in conjunction. Conjunction, or you'd say, I'm doing something in conjunction with this other thing. Next is a word that when it comes to language learning, many of you probably do not want to hear, and that is exception. It is a noun, and what it means is that it just it, it just does not follow the rules, and you would refer to something that doesn't follow the rules as an exception. And when it comes to learning English, as well as many other languages, there there are always exceptions, and that, that can make learning a bit frustrating. The next word is bash, and this is a verb, to bash, and you can bash something or you can bash someone, and it just means to criticize. And this is more of an informal word that you would hear mostly in spoken English, and it, it's a bit casual, to bash, to criticize. Then we have the verb nag, to nag someone about something. And what this means is to continuously annoy or irritate someone. So so for example, maybe someone in your family, they, they just want you to take out the trash and they keep telling you again and again and again, you could say, well, they are nagging me to take out the trash. They're nagging me about this. The next word is impede. And this is another verb to impede. And what it means is to delay someone or something by obstructing. And you often hear it when talking about progress, to impede someone's progress, which means you're just not able to move or learn as fast as you would like because, well, something is obstructing your progress. It is impeding your progress. Then we have takeaway. And this is just a word that means a, a final key point or fact or piece of information that should be remembered. You're talking about, well, the final takeaway from this lesson is that, well, I hope that you remember these vocabulary words and, and we are going to try and reinforce the meaning of these words because right now you are going to listen to our conversation and our discussion about whether or not you should really focus on grammar to improve your language skills. So keep an eye out for these words because that's just gonna help you build your vocabulary. Here's the conversation. Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> there, there's the camera. Oh, yeah. All right. So we wanted to have a conversation about a topic that uh, I think is pretty common when it comes to learning English uh, as a second language in public schools Super or common. academies. And we want to talk about grammar mm -hmm. and how important it is to study grammar. And the reason why we wanted to discuss this is because I, I think, uh, especially in some countries, their public education, there is a strong focus on grammar and a lot only grammar sometimes. <laughs> yeah a lot of it can be you know grammar 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 um and and less focus on some of the other skills like speaking and listening and, and reading and i i think we used to work at a school that had 
a strong focus there on was. grammar, um, almost maybe too much of a focus. So I think, I think that it's grammar is easy to test. Um, yeah. So I think that that's why, like, how do you test speaking? How do you? I mean, there are ways, of course, but it's, it's much. It's more subjective. And of course, you, know, you can test a whole group of people very, very quickly. Uh, and I think that many people like to measure their progress in a language. And how do you measure it? Oh, you get correct answers. However, I think progress in a language is a lot more complex. It's a lot harder to measure than just a grammar test. It, I actually took a year, a year, a whole year of Hungarian when I went to UCLA <laughs> many years ago, like 10 and years ago. Now, how is... And now we live in Hungary and I don't speak it. <laughs> the, the point is, uh, th why I'm bringing this up is because um, that whole year, I just learned grammar. It was and only I, grammar. Only grammar. I, I, I don't think there was any vocabulary, so I couldn't really yeah. put a sentence together, but I could like conjugate verbs or like translate a text mm -hmm. randomly so it yeah. did me no good i think but i mean i'm not trying to knock down grammar because it's it, it is important and we'll come to no that. i was gonna say like to that point uh i remember when i was living in korea and i was taking some classes in korean and the, the focus was grammar 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 yeah. and i almost think maybe at the the onset of studying a language it does make sense to try and learn the structure and which is what grammar is important but i think what what's interesting it seems to stay with people even as they become much more advanced and they're really focusing on grammar when personally i think as the more advanced you become i think there are other ways to reinforce your knowledge of grammar and even well, learn grammar what, like reading that's what i was going to say so i feel like studying grammar is not the entire picture mm -hmm. like if you're going to it's an important part of the language but you should not do it by itself mm -hmm. like you have to do it especially as, as you get more advanced you have to do it in conjunction with speaking and with, with reading with writing yeah it has to go together otherwise your skills are not going to be well-rounded yeah the other thing i thought was interesting because i know like as uh, adults uh, when you think about adults learning a language and children learning a language whereas i think Children will play around with the language a lot more and adults are more like, we, you know, what's the rule? We want to know what the rule is so that this makes sense. And I right. think grammar kind of provides that structure of like, That's okay, true. what is the grammar rule? Okay, Very let me try true. and learn this and let me try to follow it. They, they tend to want those rules and to understand those rules, which can even... It's like a puzzle, right? It's like nice to be able to solve it. But in some ways, I think it can almost make the language a little more confusing because it, I always think it's great to know the rules. But oftentimes, especially when you think about learning more uh, just casual uh, str uh, English that might be spoken just every day out outside on the streets, just among friends, often some of these grammar rules are broken. It, it, it does become a bit more of a puzzle that way, trying to understand why certain rules might, might be broken just in casual speech. Plus not to mention that English has a million exceptions to yeah. every rule so it's just <laughs> articles like, like everything you learn the rule and then you have to learn like 20 exceptions and yeah. it's just like oh my god when is this going to end like what do I actually have to follow so that's why I said that if you try to learn grammar you're going to drive yourself nuts by just following all the rules but I think yeah. it's a much better and easier way to do it would be to just do it in context of everything else so like uh, reading would be a great way mm -hmm. to notice how the grammar is used yeah because then when, when you're reading you're seeing the correct grammar structure being used even if you're not specifically studying a certain grammar structure or trying to learn a certain verb tense you're at least you know exposing yourself to the information to the grammar used in its correct form i don't want to sound like we're bashing grammar at all no, like because no. i think there there is it's, a value in it i think it's always good to learn review especially what you've learned i think now it, it just makes uh as as english instructors it just makes us wonder is there too much emphasis on grammar in certain educational settings and i think that is true well i think um, it's also stopping adults like if you're trying to practice your your english and you have that little nagging voice in your in your head like oh like what, what word should I put in here? Like, what, not word, word, but like, what tense should I say? And then you're trying to speak and it's impeding your communication, yeah. then yeah, that's a good I would point. say don't focus on the grammar because yes, it's important, but the 
point of speaking a language is that you communicate yeah. so focus on the what's more important i guess no i think that's that's a very good point that when you get fixed in and focused on these grammar rules and then you need to do something else like writing or speaking but it's adults and that produce do this. A, yeah typically but then they're thinking like oh wait i don't want to make a grammar mistake so they end up shame. yeah we're they end up like... you know their speech is a bit slower it's a little more thought out instead of that you know that natural uh, well because kids will just that many say the wrong want. thing exactly. and go with it and right. again as i think as instructors we always you know i would always encourage learners like don't worry you know don't worry about making mistakes we say that thousands and thousands just, of times like if you make a grammar mistake it's okay it's just so much just practice. better just keep saying it it's so much but i'm going to emphasize it's so much better for your language progress if you say it and say it wrong than if you Choose don't not say, to say it, it at all yeah because I, I trust like i know because i know that I, I used to be scared to say and it's just like well then you're not making any progress if yeah. you're not saying because it. because as you continue your studies uh, you are going to find out like if you are making a mistake in your spoken English, if it's a grammar mistake, you find that out and then work on correcting it instead yeah, of like, sure to correct well, I don't want to say it at all. If, if you know that you're making a mistake and you know you're done, don't just keep making that same mistake. If you're aware of it, mm -hmm. correct it because otherwise yeah. um, you end up with fossilization, which is... Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Do you want to explain fossilization? Fossilization <laughs> happens when somebody learns uh, a language um, and they make a mistake and then they have used and have made that mistake so many times that they end up it becomes part of their permanent vocabulary so they just use it all the time and it becomes much harder to try and, and correct it, yeah because it's basically just stuck in their mind and it's fossilized but yeah. yeah for us like the main takeaway from this conversation is that grammar is important mm -hmm. but it should be used um smartly in 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 connection conjunction connect what word I'm conjunction to... with the other language with all, yeah so what i'd like to know from all of you is how important do you think grammar is and is it something that you're trying to improve and to work on and, and what is it uh about grammar that you feel like you you'd like to know more about if that yeah. is something that you wish to improve but i'm really curious to know what all of you guys think because you are out there learning the language you're trying to improve your skills how important is it to you if you enjoyed our little conversation please hit that like button whoops i don't want to <laughs> cover you with my thumb and if you want to connect with us subscribe to our community there is a link in the description to get emails and updates and some useful resources check that out thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time see you next time